Hey guys, this is Hayden from Beabytes. We're here with the lead designer of Death's Gambit from White Rabbit Games, John Kanyelis. Is that how you pronounce it, by the way, Kanyelis? Yes, definitely. Okay. I was wondering, are you, are you French or <laughs> it's, uh, what's that it's origin? Actually, Kanyelis. But, Kanye, uh, okay, Kanyelis, okay. really hard, almost no, I don't think I've seen many people pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I, like, I watched <laughs> a few interviews before uh, going into this, obviously, and I was like, huh, everyone has a different pronunciation for your name. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I'm actually from. So it's it is a French first name. Yeah, uh, my last name is very Spanish. So my family's from Spain, but okay, uh, I lived in Puerto Rico most of my life, and then I moved to Los Angeles now, and I've been here for about five years. Right, that's guy. That's where you guys are located, right? White Rabbit. Games. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Most of the team is here. Hmm. Um, we have um, one person in Canada, um, but the rest of the team is here, and and one person on the East Coast. Right. So you, kept, you guys actually have an office space, I guess, just to get this interview going right off the bat. Um, we well, we actually, um, you know, most of our team, you know, is kind of spread out. Um, we Alex and I uh, mm-hmm. work together in our. Uh, and Alex is the lead art director, right? Yes, and, and so, narrative designer. If that, yeah, if that's the correct we title. Both <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, I yeah. mean, we both do design, and he does art, and I do programming. And um, we uh, initially it was just us two, and then we brought in um a few more people i right. think at the end of last year we brought in a new animator and then at the beginning of this year we brought another animator and we just a few months ago um brought in uh a full-time programmer to help me out a little bit um so, so the team's like reaching that uh that good double digit point at this point almost um no <laughs> no still not still not yet uh i would say we're five people full-time and wow. we have a lot of part-time people who help us out you know for example our composer right a uh, sound uh we have uh we have a few friends who also do a little bit of work on the game mm-hmm. you know in terms of art and programming well i could certainly say for the amount of people you guys have it looks like an immensely polished product from what little i played i actually got to play it at day of the devs i i didn't get to see oh, you fantastic. guys there though you guys are all the way in la were you guys busy yeah i mean that week we had a lot of things going on so right. it was really tough um in fact i kind of Kind of wish I could have gone to Day of the Devs. It was definitely mm-hmm. my. You missed Tim uh, Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I although I haven't personally met him, I've run right. into him multiple times. Uh, I think at E3, um, he's uh, Double Fine is publishing a game with Adult Swim, who's their publisher, um, and they were working together on this game I believe called Headlander, and they oh they I were just talking about that. About actually. that. Yes, yeah. they were they were talking about that one on stream, and I was I, I like I was a person who was talking about that game right after. He talked about that, so I was like right next to him. <laughs> but That's awesome. I don't think he'd recognize him. He, he's a nice dude. He was so he was so busy. But anyways, yeah. so John Canellas, or I, I butchered your name again. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, cool. you're the pro, you're the lead programmer and lead designer. And quote from your uh, bio: "Combat Design Warlock." I love that title, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I did read yes. it. So, what's a normal day uh, at the office for you? Like, I, I think you were at a meeting. You said uh, for art before you got into this interview. Yeah, 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 I was just uh, at an art call. You know, it kind of depends on the day. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, today's been a little bit slow. It's been a lot more production stuff, emails and calls, as I said. This interview. Uh, <laughs> yes, this interview. Yeah. Um, but generally, you know, it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, I guess the good days, um, I get to just sit down and program and make features on the game, you know. Um, I think a few days ago, um, I I was able to added a new bow ability and mm. added kicking in and i added a parry system in although it's the parry oh, you not you guys added parrying so, yes that is wow. the case you know uh, that it's funny because i was playing the demo and i was like i would really love if i have some type of shield bashing mechanic or parrying mechanic like, <laughs> like in third strike street fighter third strike or something like that that's Absolutely. perfect i love it i'm a huge fan of fighting games myself <laughs> uh so i actually had another question uh what specifically inspired the art direction uh, for for like a two D? Why why did you guys go for this harsh like two D aesthetic of the world? Is it because of mm-hmm. the Castlevania aesthetic? By the way, I'm that's probably my favorite franchise of all time is Castlevania. So as soon <laughs> oh, as I saw that, I was like, wow, that's Castlevania. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, art has been a lot of different stuff, and you know, like when I, people ask for inspiration, and I always say it's very different from art, gameplay, story. Everything has a lot of different stuff, and specifically art. Um, you know, I kind of generally say, you know, Castlevania. And so, uh, what is it? Sword and Sorcery. Um, yeah, Super the, Brothers. The Capybara game. Yes, mm-hmm. Super Brothers. Um, yes. That one, th- those are probably the biggest inspirations. Um, overall, you know, we kind of went for a 2D pixel art aesthetic because at the beginning we thought it would be easy um, to go that route. Although right. now we've gotten, you know, as we've made the game, we've gotten better and better. And I think, um, you know, 
what you'll see is some of our bigger enemies kind of feel like they're not pixel art anymore because they're just so big. Yeah, and they're so well animated as well. And I noticed, uh, is this a callback? I wanted to specifically ask because I kept noticing this. Is the animation of the main character supposed to be called back with that strut of a Castlevania like Belmont? Or or is that just how it turned out? Is it just the um, direction you went? A li- I mean, a little bit. Um, okay. We kind of looked at the <laughs> most... To be honest, like our animators really don't like the walking animation in the Castlevania games. Hey, uh, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> it's nostalgic, but I understand. Hey, it looks a little uh, like it looks it's, a little. It's funky. a little bit funky. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's got it's got its own charm. Uh, most people right. don't really notice it. It's just like us personal uh-huh. little pet peeves. Um, right. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> Symphony of the Night has a really funny walking animation. He's basically moon dancing. Uh, yeah, backwards yeah, he's and been... forward the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's fabulous. Uh, oh. But anyways, um, yeah. so. You got you and uh, Alex. I'm going to butcher his name as well. Alex uh, Kubodera. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Alex yeah. Kubodera. He's the art director, and you guys met at USC. So, what were, was there any other ideas uh, for a game between you, or was this the first and only guys you guys decided to create? Like, first and only game you decided to create between each other? Yeah. How, yeah. how did White Rabbit come to be, essentially? Sure. I mean, that's an interesting question. I think that we, uh, what people, I guess, generally don't know is that, yeah, we've been like same year interactive media students at USC, you know, we, we were uh, some of the first people we met when we got there at USC. So that was pretty cool. And then we've, uh, through our classes, we've kind of grouped up in several situations, you know, to make small games. Mm-hmm. Did you work at backflip studios, which is a mobile game development yes. studio, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I did a game design internship there. I worked on, uh, Dwarven Den and Ninja Jump rooftops. I saw the trailer um, for that. I was well. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was very fun. I loved it. Um, and overall, when uh, when I finished when we finished college, I guess you know overall one of one of the possible routes that we we wanted to take was start a company in the game, and um, it just happened that we were both working uh, that we both had a little bit of free time because we were I was working on <clears throat> my final project for uh, for my final class, right. and he um, he had already graduated, so overall we kind of were spending a little bit of time from here and there working on this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually we had enough to kind of post online right? and we posted it on a few indie game forums and then it kind of got picked up by some small indie game websites that cover like indie games like press or sites like and, ourselves. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then after that, I believe like probably Kotaku probably looks at those websites because I think that's how they found out. Probably. Maybe I'm wrong right and just underestimating them but yeah no they I think Kotaku has sources everywhere but yeah i understand exactly <laughs> <laughs> it was just like first first it was indie forums then it got covered by indie press and yeah. then the big people kind of started noticing it i um, think i i think what's unique about it too um and i wanted to ask you this as well for white rabbit games this is this is your first title but for you personally like you guys have a, a storied history i was looking at alex C- uh Cubadera's, uh resume as well you guys have made a lot of games actually in the past you made like a quite a few almost 10 games it seems like between you yeah no i mean a lot of like honestly a lot of student games uh, yes. like not super robust that we put online <laughs> uh, i did work on an, so the the ones that I worked at Backflip Studios, yes, those are you can buy them right now. Mm-hmm. I also worked my last year on like a final game project, which is like an online RTS thing, mm-hmm. which is actually coming to Steam eventually. Um, it's just um, it's just the programmers need to iron out right, the game right. a little more. But I since I was done with that, I started working on this. Um, but yeah, no, we we've, we've been working on on stuff the whole way through. It's just now we finally got into make kind of like more um, robust, uh, sophisticated games that you know are more complicated than just student projects, I guess. Mm-hmm. And we could talk about really, uh, I, I feel like this game is, it's it's fairly put like that it's a similar to Castlevania. It's a Soulsvania, I guess you could describe, because I feel mm-hmm. like it's more Castlevania than it is maybe Dark Souls. I, people could argue back and forth. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably a mixture of both. But uh, for you, do you ever feel like it's it's unfair for that comparison, or do you embrace that? Do you, do you love the fact that people are comparing these to these like giant franchises and these giant games? Yeah, no, I mean, I think most people probably will be fine with it. I, yeah. I'm like, I don't mind. Um, I personally, uh, actually, I actually do like it when people are like, oh, this kind of looks like this other amazing game. Right, so exactly. compared to a game that we think is really good, then that's sort of fine. Yeah, why, uh, why not, wouldn't you want you know, to compare to the greats, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Although, you know, I mean, I, I guess the struggle always is to, to make sure people realize that it's not a copy. It's to, like it's totally got a lot of unique features and has things that we personally never seen and done in other games. And 
Yeah, and I guess since we haven't really given a pitch to the audience yet, uh, what would you? How would you pitch like the story, and then like how 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 in a world where we're kind of oversaturated, you have to do, to agree that we're kind of oversaturated by like side scrolling Metroidvanias. We see that every day in Kickstarter and all these other yeah. different formats. But how do you feel that Death's Gambit specifically is unique amongst those? More, uh, it's different. Like what what's distinct about it? I personally think I know, but I want to hear what your answer is. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I specifically think that. It's got a lot of unique things. Yes. Honestly, going for it, I think the first thing that everyone notices is the big creatures. Exactly. You know, I don't think any climbable big creatures has been done, like, at least not a huge amount in 2D. I've mm-hmm. personally never seen anything specifically like in our game. No. Um, I think that our game has a lot of, you know, the way the world is set up and the RPG elements, the way we're kind of uh, looking at combat. It's right. very different from where other games um, go. We have, you know when you die we have a lot of unique features overall like i could say there's like a big list of things that i actually i actually made sure like to make to (laughs) to make a list of make sure that our game really stands out and like big features like we have when you get to a boss like you can see the average amount of deaths for other players oh really Uh, yeah and then that in some like sub menu or uh no when whenever you get to a boss whenever it has like a boss title (laughs) that's so cool (laughs) it shows you the amount (laughs) yeah um like so it has some cool network uh, quick features like that. And it has, um, you know, the way that uh, the world is designed is kind of like Dark Souls. So in that sense, I don't think it has exactly been done like that. No, um, I, I wanted and, to ask, uh, actually, bosses... is it seamless? Is, is the world seamless as well? Or is it more like, Met- is it Metroidvania in that sense that you're able to explore? Or did you guys dial it back to where it's kind of seamless, but at the same time, it's more like stage based? Is it, is it like? Can I can I go from the the tundra to the castle, for example, and back and forth pretty seamlessly, or no? Yeah, I mean the world is you know connects between each other. It's a right. it's a Castlevania style, you know. Yeah. It's just you go in whichever order you kind of want. Although some areas are way harder to start. Right. Right. Um, and I guess another cool feature, which I before I forget, is like our bosses are immortal, so you can yes. come fight them, and mm. when you kill them, you can actually come back and fight them again. And depending how you fight them, you might get uh, a different item. Say like if you do it like a hard way. <laughs> So uh, is it is it like uh, is it like Mega Man in the sense that where if you defeat a boss early and you get a certain item, it'll help you fight a boss later? For example, like, is, uh, it, yeah, no esta- is there established order, or could, like you said, it'll just be more challenging if I go to like the Tundra um, boss, for example? Early. There's definitely not a specific order. Okay. Um, definitely, if you kill a really hard boss at the start, it'll probably help you kill another boss. Right. You definitely want to make it so that no boss is ever like trivialized, so it's never super stupid easy, but. <laughs> We were talking about the immor- how the bosses in Death's Gambit are all immortal, right? Yes, that is yeah. the case. Yeah, so I had a question. Like, the, the fact that these bosses are immortals begs the question of how do you actually slay something that, by definition, can't die? And you were uh, saying earlier that it respawns, but are we incarcerating these immortals? Or do they, <laughs> like, how, how does that work? Are we Death's Ghostbuster? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually don't know how much I can talk about it. Okay, uh, yeah, it reveals It's, it's very important to the story. Um and it's kind of like part, you know, it's part of some of the twists and turns of, of what happens in the game. And, mm. you know, you're killing these immortals, what, uh, but they come back. What does that mean? What yeah. do you have to do? Um, is there a way to, to like make them go away forever? Like, you know, mm-hmm. the immortals, you know, that's, that's task. Yeah. Um, uh, he basically picked you to actually make them go away forever. Mm. Uh, but when you fight them in game, um, they keep coming back. So suffice to say, there may or may not be another way of actually uh, making them not immortal. To make uh, them go bye bye, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and or it might be tied to the story. <laughs> oh man! Uh, and why? Is, why oh, I, I, you're 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 killing me, John. I just want to know. Like right now, I just want to know. <laughs> but no, it's hard. It's hard because I think it's very crucial to you know. I don't the, want you to. I don't want you to ruin the surprise either. That's for sure. For sure. But um, definitely, when I heard the premise that the fact that you are Death's agent, I mean, the title alone is perfect in capturing mm-hmm. the idea that you are you are Death's gambit to like attack these <laughs> gods and like take them down. But is the story inspired? Because we saw in the trailer a little cutscene at the end that really evoked a lot of like hopelessness for me personally. Where uh, the main character, by the way, does the main character have a name? Um. Yes, he does. Okay. Uh. It actually just changed. I don't know what, oh, what wow. Alex what Alex specifically wants. So I don't want to give okay. you an exact name. No, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> I was just wondering um, if he's is, is the player more of an analog for the player? Or is he a defined character with the past and with like a motivation? Um, definitely, he's it, it, the main character is definitely a a person. Um, okay. You can though change the main character in several ways. Um, uh, specifically, I can definitely talk about the gear. 
Okay. Um, you can definitely change his his cape, his aura, his shield, his weapons, and all that changes the look of the character. Yeah, uh, the, the the orange scarf in particular that really struck out to me, almost like a Strider or a recently Hyperlight Drifter. Kind of reminds you of that, mm-hmm. like that really distinct like. Yeah. Does that does that work into the gameplay at all, or is that it, completely aesthetic for you guys? Like, are you trying to denote the animation? Yeah, for sure. I yeah. think um, it definitely helps the the character's portrait and overall look cooler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although yeah, it, course, is, it isn't a scarf initially; it was a scarf. We moved it to being just a cape. Oh, okay. Um, which is which is definitely different from from both of those. Although yes. yeah, it looks kind of similar. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, specifically the cape. You actually, you know, that's an item you can equip, and it changes how it looks. And okay. Um, and I think um, we posted a devlog recently showing how our auras also change the look of the character. There's like a boss that gains angel wings. And mm. say you beat the boss, um, you may get the angel wings uh, right. that follows you. And sh- yeah, as I mentioned, some of the other stuff also changes the character. Yeah, speaking about bosses too. So in the, again, you probably can't reveal very much on this. I'm, mm. I'm delving deep into the storyline because I'm a creative writing major myself, so I feel like okay. really... Thank, they, by the way, thanks for inspiring me to actually feel like I could become a creator <laughs> eventually as a college student. <laughs> I am at SF State right now. But anyways, um, I was saying, in the, in the reveal trailer's climax, you see the silhouette of what looks to be either that phoenix dragon or what looks to be something more. Um, in a world where death's your ally, who could possibly be your ultimate foe? That's what I'm questioning. In another interview, yeah. I think the the one thing I mentioned was uh, there could be something worse than death. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. But uh, I can't really go anything further than of that. Of course, of course. I was thinking actually, like maybe it's something like Lords of Shadows, where you're fighting like Satan or something like that. Like you're fighting. <laughs> you're, like if you ever played the Castlevania, the more recent Mercury scene Castlevania games. I have not played the 3D ones, unfortunately. You know, uh, Lords of Shadows. They, they don't get that. But I think they get too bad of a rep. I think if you give it the chance and actually like. Uh-huh. play it for as a unique interter- interpretation of castlevania it's fun but yeah i mean i actually you know it's not like kind of bashing on them i actually yeah. they look like good enough you know yeah um and it's just i haven't had the time you know i right unfortunately i think lords of shadow came out recently uh, uh like a, i think about a year, a year ago, ago yeah a two, or two which, years ago yeah which you know since i started the game it's, right. it's been really tough to <laughs> to get in and, and get some time to play some other stuff i know the two like games that I actually like got and completed um, recently was Bloodborne and Metal Gear Solid Five. But aside from that, <laughs> definitely could go on for a long time. I know we definitely could. Let's let's games. talk about your actual game, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, so, um, is is I think we mentioned this a bit, but is the storytelling approach uh, in the Soulsvania tradition of focus on environmental cues and atmosphere, or is it maybe going to be mixed in with some sparse cutscenes and dialogue? Um. You know, I definitely, you know, one of the things that I do like about the Souls series, and specifically looking at that one, is how they don't do too much cutscenes. They do. I mean, they have, like, boss cutscenes and at the start and some events. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what we're kind of looking at. Um, overall, uh, mostly you learn as you play through the, like, through what happens in the world, through, say, even item descriptions of what and NPCs yes. say, you know, about, you know, the world and everything around it. That's definitely something we really like about that series. Um, uh, there is a intro like sort of quick intro sequence so the beginning of the game does have um it's not cutscene heavy <laughs> it isn't um we try to get you to gameplay as humanly fast as possible definitely mm-hmm. in the first few minutes um so but yeah it does have like an intro event basically um but aside from that that and the ending possibly there's not much to say in terms of like big cutscenes or um a lot of you know time away from the controller that's you right, know right. want to keep the player on the controller uh, all the time. <laughs> Focus on the actual action RPG element. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely a very gamey game. I, uh, in the in the tradition of uh, a true Castlevania or Soulsvania kind of thing. Absolutely. Too. Though Absolutely. that is not to say that the story you know is not fleshed out. I actually you know really, um, really excited with what is going to happen, and I think people are, uh, <clears throat> gonna, not gonna see like there. I don't think people know where it's going to go and it's definitely surprised and you surprised you're saying yes yeah definitely okay. that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah i remember i actually read in other interview as well that you were binge watching ghosts in the shell which by the way uh i love that <laughs> well, we're huge anime fans over here we actually have a podcast so goy squad if you want to check it out uh dedicated to anime so when i read that and i also read that you were inspired by attack on titan for the hook mechanic of the game where you're using yeah. it to clamber on it onto enemies i literally was like fan i was like fangirling out <laughs> i was like oh wow this guy's perfect perfect i love yeah, it yeah you know initially initially we um made the player have like a hook uh yeah 
gun basically that was super powerful it yeah. kind of broke the entire game so we like <laughs> made it <laughs> less it. like in titan e it i mean it's kind of it still works exactly like in the trailer right um though um it's it was way more overpowered before and could be used to kind of break the whole game so we kind of had to tone it down though it's something that you know it's still looking at and wish we could do so is go did that, that, did that I, inform um, so did anime inform the or was it shadow of the colossus because obviously that's the instant parallel that people draw is like oh this is like a 2d shadow of the colossus, it, was, but... it was like a combination of both you know? okay okay uh, i and you know when i'm when i mentioned ghost in the shell it's kind of hard i try not to mention it because yeah, because i don't think too many people will see the similarities um it is what initially inspired the initial idea for the story mm. of a world of immortals and um right but uh I can't go too much detail, I guess. No, uh, hey, there is some, there is something else. Some. When you play the game, you'll be like, "Oh, okay, that's definitely very Ghost in the Shell," but I can't really go too much into it. So when it, when I get to fight Tachikomas in the game, that's when I know it's Ghost in the Shell. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd get in trouble, but yeah, <laughs> yeah probably, maybe, maybe. Hey, Adult Swim did air uh, Ghost in the Shell. Speaking yeah. of, you guys are being partnered with Adult Swim, and I was mentioning earlier how it seems like for these kind of games, for side scrolling Castlevania s games. They are almost dependent entirely on Kickstarter or some type of crowdfunding campaign. How can we imagine a world where, uh, where it was fa- like funded on Kickstarter? Like, how did this partnership with Adult Swim even happen in the first place? Really? Yeah, um, we initially yes, we initially wanted to do Kickstarter, and um, when we uh, uh, posted information about our game online, we had a lot of publishers email us directly, like mm-hmm. not us going to them. They actually in, in, wow. like t- went to us and said, "We want to publish a game." And fund it. Is there any way you could uh, share adults, uh, any who? Is there any ways you could share who who messaged you? Um, well, I can say that Adult Swim was one of those people. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't. I shouldn't probably go into too much. Into it, but, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it was definitely a lot. Yeah. Um, that's good. Some people we had to contact directly. Mm. Um, though at the end of the day, we ended up going with Adult Swim, who emailed us directly, anyways. Yes. So, um, so overall, we did have a lot of attention, and that kind of just showed us that hey, we totally that this will definitely be easier than Kickstarter, and you know. A lot of people, you know, it, it makes sense. You know, it, it kicks mm-hmm. makes sense if you don't have the money. Yeah. And people would get a little bit, uh, think it's a little bit fishy if we already have the money in the Kickstarter anyways. So we think it's fine. We're good enough right. um, like this. And uh, that's why we didn't go with Kickstarter. But, but I, think, you know, I think the game is impressive enough as it is, like, from the prototype, that the fact that, like, you guys got picked up by a publisher, was it's pretty obvious, like, why they pick you up instantly as well. Like. Again, you guys haven't gotten the chance to play, and there's no demo yet, right? Of course, there's no builds available. But the, the game is so it's so damn good, I have to say, John. I, <laughs> like, as soon as I tried it, I was like, wow, this is... And I was playing a lot of games. No offense to some of the other Day of the Devs uh, developers, but I was like, wow, this is beyond anything I've played so far tonight. So you have that esteem to go for. But how, how good does it feel? Does it feel to, like, know that you guys, like, were almost freshly out of college and then instantly were being knocked on your door with emails and all these other things, like, just a lot of <laughs> stuff? Well, for sure. I mean, thanks for, you know, uh, for the compliments. And yes, um, we felt really fortunate. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> I think it just feels really odd, you know, um, getting contacted by, by publishers. And then we had to go and pitch the project to people who are like twice as old as us. And it's really weird because we just yeah. came out of college. Um, so it was very unexpected, very weird. I don't know how to feel. Just really fortunate. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it feels like you guys... You you deserve everything you've you all the praise <laughs> you've gotten so far. So don't worry about that. Your compliments are well <laughs> deserved. You. So uh, I, it's it, a lot of work. I, I imagine you were saying how I, I think I read another thing where you were saying how you don't get the time really to play games. You you just got to play Bloodborne, obviously, and Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm-hmm. But if you don't play a game that you can't complete, you say you don't play it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, um, I yes, probably. Yes. Um, in most situations, that's kind of what I do. Right. Um, I I also I mean I like with competitive games. I remember specifically. I haven't played too much competitive games in a while, um, or anything that's multiplayer. But um, besides Bloodborne, I guess. But um, when when there's like a big game, I guess like League of Legends or Warcraft Three or something like that. If I uh, if I start it, I go really hard and I try mm-hmm. to be as be, I try to be as uh, uh, I guess try hard as possible. When I, like, you try to get to like the highest rank. You have to get yeah, like, the highest I try, tier. I, yeah, yeah. And if I don't have the time, then I don't. I, I I don't know. I just I barely play it. Although to be fair, I guess um I have been playing with a few friends just because I like playing. You know, just because they invite me to play. It's just a little mm-hmm. bit of Heroes of the Storm, which is just I guess casual fun though. Um, 
Yeah, you were mentioning in your bio, you mentioned how you love playing games like Diablo or like these games that have a lot of loot drops and have a lot of like deep systems in the MMO world. Is that inspiring? Mm -hmm. Like, are we going to expect a lot of uh, loot drops and weapons and all that stuff in Death Gambit? Or is it going to be more like some sparse items every once in a while? Definitely. I mean, definitely inspired, you know, by like specifically raid design in MMOs. And if you've seen um, Destiny's raid design, I I haven't played it, unfortunately, though I hear it's very good. It's pretty Um, fun. (laughs) I I hear everything except like everything is pretty meh except the raids. And then like for me, yeah, it felt like it felt like a step back uh, from like Halo. But that's just me. We can go. We can have an entire conversation about that. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, to me, to me, it was a little bit inspired by by specifically raids Uh um, and how you would slowly get stronger by getting specific loot from bosses. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of what you do here. You kill bosses, you get a better weapon or a better helmet or whatever. And then you're stronger that way. Um, in and and like you need to increase your stats so that you can make sure you can equip those items too. Though, um, yeah, it, it's definitely that. It's kind of like a boss fest. It, it isn't just bosses. Definitely, there's levels. Though, uh, my our goal is to kind of put the player in a situation where it's like, okay, uh, which one should I do first? Okay, I'm having trouble with this one. Maybe I should look up some information online or maybe the hints. Like I could find a way to like figure out how to beat this boss. Right. And uh, yeah, kind of keep, uh, always give the player options of different things to try and progress, mm-hmm. but always give them the option to fight something that's too hard for them. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, if, if they happen, and it's totally doable, I'm guessing it's totally valuable based on the, the time. Like it's just a matter of, of balancing because the, the game really focuses on a, a, a system of, pairing as you just added to the game a system of blocking pairing and timing uh your roles right yep. so you could totally beat probably any boss i'd imagine like in a souls game but it's just very difficult is that what you'd say or are yes. there definitely yeah, walls yeah. that you'd hit um i mean you will hit walls if you don't level up or get gear of course right. um but you i believe it's sh- everything should be possible okay um it'll just be extremely hard right. uh, <laughs> um but Yes, definitely. You could speed run the game, killing only the most most important bosses specifically. And uh, you know, there's there's I hate grinding. There's no need to do that either. Yes, you know, thank you so much for yeah, saying that. <laughs> I mean, I think that was one of my biggest complaints with yes. Bloodborne and the healing system in that game. Mm. Um, yeah, just, you, get, you yeah. have to keep grinding, and like it feels yeah. sometimes like you're just slicing through these minions to get to get to that next level. Yes, right. absolutely. I have totally feel um, you. So, so so in that sense, you know. Everything is possible, I think, to a, to a certain extent. You can definitely, I'll at least tell you this, you can definitely beat the game with the starting equipment. That's definitely wow. the, the goal. But I can't imagine how long that would take. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be easy, and there definitely is harder content than just completing the game. Yeah, so... I can't go into that. Yeah, no, no problem <laughs> about that. I'm sure there's there's plenty of massive bosses. I remember seeing uh, Karen, I think, it, I don't know how you pronounce it, Karen in the, the Tundra Lord or something like that, in the ice level that was on display at Day of the Devs. And that was yeah. impossible for me in the brief time I oh, had to really? play. It, I, I had a line behind me, of course, so it's a different environment. No problem. But, I, um... Yeah, no, I mean, like, <laughs> people um, people really have, uh, you know, th- there's been people at events that have been in it, though. Generally, it's only a few per event. Right. Um, and it's generally people who stay there for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like, thinking. I was like, man, I just want to get in here. There's so many people here. It's a free event. Come on, double fine. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I was dying. I was like, oh, man, I hope there's a demo pretty soon or something like that. But uh, anyways, mm-hmm. on on the challenge aspect and focusing on that. So if you, you've probably heard this, and since you're a big fan of Castlevania, I, I could tell. Um, Koji Igarashi, who's now the director of the recent Bloodstain. He always says how he designs bosses in a way that you have to be able to beat it without dying or without like losing any health. You have to beat it perfectly. How do you guys play test your bosses, personally, since you're the combat designer? Like, how do you so, develop these encounters for that between fair and uh, challenging? I mean, that's a that's a really fun question, actually, <laughs> because yes, um, in most situations, um, I do believe that you know you should be able to get to a boss as the developer. Mm-hmm. Killing a boss without getting hit should be sort of easy um mm. which surprisingly you know i can beat the tunnel door without getting hit for example wow um though um there i i don't 100 percent agree with one thing where it's like um where you should like there's specific designs of bosses where like you might limit yourself uh-huh. um if you don't uh if you adhere to those rules all the time like i feel like you should be able to kind of bend the rule once or twice so there's specifically like a boss for um i i won't go too much into it but right. basically there's attacks that are unavoidable, but you get infinite healing items to some extent. And I can't go oh. too much into it, but it's very complex. That's really intriguing to me, the concept <laughs> yeah. of that, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and the way it works, I think people will be able to, you know, be okay with the fact that they that there's no way to, to avoid a specific attack. Um, it's right. not like I, I'm pretty confident it'll be fine. It's just like um, <laughs> I'm just saying that there's there's rules you need to mostly adhere to them, but it's fine if you break it from time to time. Right. And are so, you play? Are you so? What is your philosophy behind that then? Like when it comes to develop, developing a boss encounter or anything like that? Is it for you? Is it fine? Like if if you can beat it in like in a reasonable amount of time, do you have other people to play test it for you and uh, yeah, figure it out too? It's it's tough, and I yeah. have to play test it because right. in almost all situations, I'm like, oh, this is too easy, and then I go bring it to someone, and they're like, this is impossible. Right. Um, and it's not because you know I'm saying that I'm the best gamer in the world. It's just because <laughs> I'm like I've been programming it. I've been playing it constantly. You literally uh, made it. You made, you're making the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So the the whole thing is I have to um I have to play test it, uh-huh. and I kind of just count you know how long players lasted, how mm. frustrated they were, did they know what to do, were they doing it right and still died, right. um, where did they um, you know. Do they not know what to do? How can we make it more obvious? Or um, was is that the goal? Like, is this supposed to be a really easy boss? Or is this supposed to be the final boss? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, it totally depends. And definitely, you know, it's it's a hard game. And I think, you know, from from Trond to Lord. Um, but mm. uh, I think, you know, people often ask, you know, well, how difficult it is and how what our goal is. And definitely, you know, I, I, for example, I go replay and I watch someone new play, for example, Dark Souls. And I see, okay, so... They died this amount of times uh, to this. <laughs> then probably it's fine if someone dies that many times in our game. Yes. Um, if if that's the difficulty we're going for, mm-hmm. and um, that's kind of, we're kind of going for Dark Souls one difficulty overall, but um, it'll kind of sh- go up and down here and there. And there's a lot of optional stuff that I that um, that is definitely harder. <laughs> so so we can expect like optional when you, when you explore the world, we can expect like yeah. optional content, like some quests, maybe not quests per se, but like some, mm-hmm. some other routes we can take for more equipment and stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. Although um, there's definitely st- other stuff that I wish I could get into that I can't. Hey, maybe uh, eventually one day we can. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. we actually will. You know, I believe um, we're, we're working on a new trailer, which will reveal a lot of stuff that's coming near the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're sure show- we're hoping to reveal a few new bosses Ooh. And uh, a lot of a lot of features that we haven't unveiled that hopefully people will be very excited to see. Um, I'm very yeah. excited. I can tell a lot you of, right a lot now. of giant stuff, <laughs> a lot of uh, really cool features that people will be like, "Oh, I'm really excited to see that finally." So, when uh, you're designing like minions and stuff like that, do you feel like those are only for you? Do you want those to be just as challenging in a sense, or? or satisfying as a boss fight because it seems obviously that the set pieces and like we see in the trailer this massive mm-hmm. uh titan uh look, looks like something from jotun for example something like massive mm-hmm. uh walking across where you have to use your hook and a horse and everything like that but are the minions and like that that infantry combat going to be just as satisfying because for me it was personally how do you mm-hmm. test that and like how, how what's your philosophy behind the infantry um this is it's kind of a complicated question are you saying um specifically are are the giant bosses going to feel like the small ones are you no, saying no are we... what i'm trying to say is like how do you how do you make it fun for the player to play the against the things that aren't bosses for example like the small oh okay things. so specifically yeah. the levels um you know that's something that we're actually really fostering right now because okay we really love bosses and we're really right we really are pretty confident about them and they feel pretty good in our game right now and levels do too. Mm-hmm. I just think that Dark Souls is like so masterful at level design and enemy design that it's actually crazy. It's insane, and, Bloodborne, for example. Just like every yeah. single, it, oh man, it, it's, it's such really, a good game. <laughs> really well designed. It's hard, and it's hard, you know, to like yeah. be able to make that. And like, a, I, I definitely think that our combat is definitely more deep than Castlevania. But mm-hmm. when comparing it to Dark Souls, I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta get there. And it's definitely, it's definitely there in some places. We need to polish the game. You know, we're right. in half development, though. Um, it's hard. Um, we just try to make the enemies kind of, um, kind of trick you and do traps yeah. and make sure it keeps stay. It stays exciting, mm. um, so that you kind of keep running into unexpected events and that keeps it interesting the whole way through. Hopefully, yeah. You were mentioning how you don't want any grinding either. So that sound the the, the idea yeah. of it being constantly exciting. I could definitely tell you from my short stint mm-hmm. with the game, it felt everything felt varied. Every encounter felt like I had a. There's a chance of me dying at every encounter, which is very souls like, mm-hmm. which I, I personally adore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely, that's that's what we're going for. Perfect, um, you captured it already. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, would you say uh, would you say that the bosses are what it, when you have to like look at the game wholesale at the point that you guys are at? Uh, I don't know what if you guys wanted to throw a percentage of how complete you guys mm-hmm. are, but um, would you guys say like what are you personally, John, uh, proud of in the game's development thus far? And maybe is there something that you're 
disappointed in at its current state. <laughs> maybe you want that. Maybe you want to like change or like you're working on currently to make it less of a development hassle. I mean, I you know, yes, there's definitely things that we're really proud of. Definitely things that need work. I think one of the um, one of the biggest things we're really proud of is definitely your bosses. You know, we think that they're really unique. They all stand out as being like their own thing, and they have really cool mechanics that I think people will really remember. Um, and overall, I'm also really proud of the uniqueness of our game. I think there's yes. a lot of things, um, specifically that we just haven't revealed on purpose that I don't. We don't think any other game has done. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that should really. Uh, that's just the stuff that we're kind of proud of. It's just you know, John. Oh. I want to know it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Um, so, so is what, so what, what part of the game are you guys currently working on that you feel like needs that polish though, necessarily? I mean, I, I think if you played it, you might've noticed, I don't know if the hook shot needs the controls. Yeah, for that. actually that's, I, I'm writing a preview and that's specifically what I noticed is like the hook shot for me was a little, it was a little hard for me to get on certain, certain platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's definitely something that like, is not staying that way. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> improving. That's really um, good to so hear. for example, yeah, I'm still feeling like controls and feel of it. Uh, could keep getting improved yes and yeah overall some some of the levels currently they're not there in our quality but that makes sense because we just haven't been able to polish them yet right. um and you know that's pretty much that's pretty much it it's just at this point we're about uh 60 percent done okay. 60 or so percent done with the content right um and even then when we're done with the content there's a lot of polish time to be done to make sure everything is perfect exactly and, Good. I'm sure there, uh, for a game like this, I'm sure playtesting is a month. Like you're just constantly playtesting. Like as soon as you add something to the game, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still think we we we're not playtesting enough, even though we are. Um, you're a small team, so that that's understandable. Yep, yep. Yeah. And we're we're gonna start uh, doing more now that the game is farther in the development. Yep. Is, is there going to be a uh, skill tree, or like it's like kind of like Do- Dark Souls, where you're feeding into a class system, or is it purely like you have these stats and they're playing into the game? um specifically um there is not like a talent system okay um there is stats like in dark souls you have equipment you have abilities you can equip you have three equipment slots for abilities and these all are very different depending on what weapon you're using right um and you have items that you can equip specifically there is no talents but there is uh there's also an upgrade system which um we might talk about on our devlog really soon Mm -hmm. um the but uh the way it works is you can basically talk to an npc to disenchant uh items that you don't want okay. and and use the it, it basically turns them into another item that can be used to upgrade weapons and equipment that you do like that uh, sounds great <laughs> and overall uh that hopefully that is enough depth for us right. because i think that our equipment is very very you know designed in a more complex way than other games you know our equipment almost always has a specific weird effect to it. Mm-hmm. So you have to like kind of think about it a lot. Um, for example, I think one of the boots that you find in that demo like make you stronger when you attack in the air or something like that. Mm. Um, and we have, he- you know, you can equip and switch out your healing items and different healing items. Um, your Phoenix Feather specifically, you can't, you can't like uh, grind healing items. You only have a set amount of them that regenerate right. at this point. But you lose that- them on death, don't you, the Phoenix Feathers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they specifically each have a different use. So some of them might give you, say, a movement speed buff, but heal for less. Or one might heal for a lot, but it takes a lot of time to use it. And maybe okay. one heals. One of them heals for really little, but it's really fast to to use. Um, so you know, in terms of equipment variety, I think that might make up for maybe not having a talent system just because right. there's a lot to decide there. But you still have abilities, don't you? Because I think on the oh, D- yeah. like yep. maps yep. of the D-pad, you can use these. Is, are they consumable as well? Because I kind of noticed they, they're like limited and they disappear. Or maybe that was just the demo or a bug or something. But when um, I, when I they, they have that. uses and they regenerate at save points. So okay. whenever you get to a save point or when you die, you get them back. Oh, okay. So once um, you, but use you have them- to find them in the world and or buy them from, from people. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they so they are temp- they're not consumable in the sense that like they're gone forever they're just for that life they're they're gone then? yes okay. yep, yep. interesting i really like that concept so we're, we're we're running low on time apparently so we're just gonna yes. i wanted some personal questions for you um as a developer sure. and for white rabbit games of the future so i wanted to ask what is it that made you want to make video games and more specifically focus on the design and programming of video games um so specifically i don't really i I actually consider myself a designer even though i'm the main programmer on the game um i did it mostly because uh you know who else would have made the game i we we like (laughs) don't have the money to go around to make the game i just start programming it because i have to 
and I still program it today. I mostly, you know, I mostly have fun when I'm designing like enemies and player stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the rest, I think, it's really boring. I consider myself a designer. I just do programming because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone there is probably an everyman since you guys are in the single digits when it comes to the developers on hand. So. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. So overall, you know, that's that's the reason why I'm a programmer, though. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I came to USC uh, to study game design, and right. that was just what I wanted to do from the start. You know? So since you were young, were you inspired by games that you, you played, like Castlevania, things like that? Is that what made you want to go into the games development? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of games inspired me. I played yeah. definitely too much stuff, like <laughs> overall. Um, but uh, it makes that up for is the lack you could play now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just games, and even when I was in high school, I made some really small like website games, and right. that kind of really motivated me. You know, that's really what I want to do. So I want to check out these website games. Where are they available? <laughs> <laughs> I'll <laughs> link them over <laughs> Skype when we're done with this. It's a little bit embarrassing. So I don't know. About... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, w I definitely feel like I will post them on our devlog at some point right. because they're really funny. It, they're actually, I mean, I think the biggest one I made was like a very Castlevania Ooh. Paper Mario-ish thing. Ooh, that sounds great. Come on. Yeah. Give yourself some more credit. Uh, I want to play these now. <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah. I mean, they clearly look like they're they're pretty student games, but yeah, no. Are they some I'll Newgrounds or like, some, are they new grounds or e -bombs world kind of games or? Um, unfortunately, Game Maker games couldn't fit on, on, on uh, Newgrounds. Oh, okay. Um, but I did put them on Game Maker Games websites. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go hunt them down now. <laughs> <laughs> so, as as White Rabbit Games' debut title, how do you personally feel that Death's Gambit plays into establishing the studios and the team's identity as a whole? U ultimately, what are your personal hopes for the future of White Rabbit Games? Um, unfortunately, I, I don't really know how to how to really answer that right <laughs> now. It's something that we think yeah. about a lot, but. Um, but I can't give you a real answer because we're not, not sure ourselves. You guys um, are so deep in development, ideas right? of... Oh, sorry? You guys are so deep in development, it must be difficult. Yes, it's definitely yeah. not a priority to think exactly about mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, there's definitely some things that, you know, we have planned that um, could go either or, so it just totally depends on a lot of things, and I, I really can't go too much into it. Overall, um, it's, uh, I do think that White Rabbit will eventually make more games, though. Of course. Um it just depends what, what we're doing, you know? There's, right. a, there's a lot of things that could change, so I can't really answer that too much. No problem. I can, I can completely understand. It, for you, it must be you wake up every day, go, work, go to work, and actually are developing this passionate project that you're, you're in the present right now, right? You're, you're not yes. really thinking about the future as much as that. Uh, yep. So for our last question, I try to ask this to every developer I interview, but the last question, possibly the e easiest and probably the hardest at the same time, what do games personally mean to you? So are they art? First and foremost, are they life? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do games um, mean to you in your life? Um, that's a deep question. It is, isn't it? <laughs> um, what do they mean in my life? Uh, and what are they art? Okay. Um, I think it, to some extent, yes, they are art. Yeah. I, I don't think it really matters. You know, I, to some extent, I just look at games and as they are, they're just important pieces of work. Hmm. Um, just like movies and uh, books and etc they're just they're just what they are i don't think that they should be super classified specifically yep. um, i just think that they're really important to a lot of people they affect us like emotionally like they're definitely part of our childhood and so in that sense they're really important i would definitely hate if games going away because they're a really good pastime and <laughs> they're definitely part part of us especially the more important games you know when you finish a good movie when you finish a good book when you finish a good game you're just like, wow, that totally affected me, like it really deeply and it totally changed me. And in that sense, uh, I do think games are important. You know, mm -hmm. they're important um, because we really just care about them and they, they affect us. I know it's a really lame answer, probably. No, but, no, that's a, that's a fantastic but it's just, I, answer. I, I, I honestly just think it's, it, it's kind of vague. Uh, I think it's sort of important to be a little bit vague by, when classifying games. I think they're just there we don't need to you don't need they don't need to have a reason to exist right so in your um, life there's they're something more they're more meaningful than art they're, they're not something that is draw, that can be constrained by a genre classification right yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah you, you could totally say there are yeah i mean yeah, well, it's oh, just i don't think it's a question to us whether it's art yeah. or not but yeah yeah <laughs> But no, I mean, I personally already, I can tell you right now, I'm already affected and super excited for Death's Gambit myself, just from the brief little time I played of it. It feels like mm -hmm. you're making the, the dream game I've always wanted to kickstart <laughs> myself personally, but uh, 
I, I, I'm so thankful for your interview for, for accepting Thank this. You. And can we expect a, is, is there a, a, like a TB day, a TBD on the release day? Is, could, is there an ETA on um, that or? I can't really say much other than 2016. Yeah. Um, we, it's definitely coming out 2016. We just want to make sure everything is good yes. and don't release it rushing. Don't want to rush it. We just Please take sure. your time. So I can't really give an exact date yet. Yeah. But, and it's on uh, PC yeah. and PS4 as far as yes. we know. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. It might be going into something else, but. I can't, we can't really talk about that yet. <laughs> it's, all, it's all still very early in development, folks. But thank you so much, John. It, this, is, this is a fantastic interview, and I love talking it, uh, about Death's Gambit with you. And I cannot wait. Man, this interview just made me more amped to, to play and find out what this, how, how are we going to trap these immortals? Oh, I have so many questions more, but maybe we could get a follow up once the game comes out. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Thank you so thank much you. for taking your time with us. Yeah, thank you. And see ya. See ya. game you've always wanted. It'd be a disservice to dismiss the game as yet another Metroidvania from Softlike, however. Titans towering over a treacherous tundra, a phoenix scorching the skies. It is the boss battles of Death's Gambit that are to die for. And die and die and die and die and... In the brief time I got to spend braving the non